both the Lakers and Warriors decided their rosters were in good enough shape and stayed out of the trade deadline insanity. And as a result, we got one of the best games of the regular season. As the Lakers came back from an early deficit to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best teams in the West, thrilling us with an ending we won't soon forget. The story of the first half was Jonathan Kaminga, who's averaging almost 16 a game over his last six, and he was seemingly everywhere last night. They can even rely on him to bring the ball up and initiate offense as he catches Anthony Davis out of position and forces the Lakers defense into scramble mode. Steph uses the loony screen in the corner, and when Stanley Johnson full switches without telling Bradley, it allows Looney a very short roll to the block. LeBron should be stepping over to support AD's rotation, but instead, Kaminga just flushes it hard. The Lakers played as well as they could against the constant motion of the Warriors. Curry fakes a pin down which forces the switch, but then it turns into a pin down for Curry. No switch this time and he's running full speed into the catch and ball screen. AD has no choice but to pick him up and is no match for the dance Curry puts him through from the right wing. On the weak side, Russ is guarding Wiggins and LeBron is on Kaminga. LeBron motions to Russ, telling him to switch. Russ turns his head and loses sight of the ball, having no idea the pass is whizzing by him right to Kaminga for another smash. Without Steph in there, the Warriors rely more on supreme ball movement. A double pin away for Clay is well defended, so Poole gets a double ball screen, again contained well. So they flow into a Miami Heat style set where Kaminga hits the high post and follow back. Looney opts to dribble hand off the pool out of the corner, and AD again blows this action up. The perils of a freeform motion offense is you can get this happening. Damian Lee setting the flare screen for Clay to go to the corner, while Kaminga is cutting there at the same time. Clay cuts to the block, and watch how this completely confuses the defense. Taylor Horton Tucker doesn't realize Reeves picked up his man, and a simple dribble towards the corner triggers the back door and another one legged smash. Toward the end of the first half, Kaminga makes the wrong read and throws it away. But instead of giving up, look at his incredible effort to contest this into a miss. While THT should pick Kaminga up in transition, he's too slow. Stanley Johnson should be checking, but THT should be yelling at him. As a result, they get an easy layup, all based on the incredible hustle by the rookie. The Lakers, however, got right back in this game in the second quarter. Nemanja Bielica is the natural target in the pick and roll for LeBron, and while he's backing up too much and foolishly reaching in, we do catch LeBron landing before releasing the pass, don't we? But Russ wisely passes up the wide open three to make one more pass to a player who's shooting even worse than he is from three. The proper rotation should be an X out, with Lee correctly going to the corner, but Clay doesn't react in time to get to the wing, and Horton Tucker makes him pay. Allowing middle penetration causes all sorts of problems for a defense. Four players hover around Russ in the lane. Here's another late X out as Curry crosses to the corner, but Bielitsa is slow reacting to the wing. His poor closeout allows slight middle penetration, and Kaminga is more than willing to help one pass away and give up a three ball to LeBron, who is at 35% from the on the arc this year, and promptly nails one of his two threes in the quarter. On the AD post up, Looney sneaks over to the midline. Remember, he can stay in the lane for 2.9 seconds before having to get both feet out. But here's another X out where Poole goes to the corner and Looney is supposed to cross to the wing. Wiggins rotates from the top, but it's not a good angle. And there's the dreaded middle penetration again where role players look like all-stars. The Russ LeBron pick and roll sucks both players curiously to Russ. Wiggins isn't certain what he wants to do, but based on Kaminga covering for him in the corner, he should just pick up the ball. This doesn't happen, and LeBron waltzes right to the rim for a layup. Lost in all the excitement was the fact that LeBron broke Kareem's record for most points in the regular season and playoffs combined. An incredible moment to be sure, and one that would have been great to have been witnessed in person. And there's no better way to make that happen than to use SeatGeek. They scour the internet for the best prices on tickets to concerts, sporting events, or the theater, and you always know what kind of a deal you're getting with the great selection of seats that SeatGeek finds from all over the internet. If you use my code BBALL, you can save 20 bucks off your first purchase. So do what John Wooden said. Be quick, don't hurry. And use SeatGeek to find all your tickets for concerts, sporting events, or the theater. 
and that way you'll have more energy to go see your favorite shows. The kind of energy that both teams channeled to give us an incredible stretch run. Where Clay Thompson came up huge for them with 16 points, every single one of them needed. On the quick step up screen by Porter, Russ has to step up to prevent the three point shot, but he gets blown by immediately. With AD rotating down properly, LeBron is supposed to close to the corner. He doesn't move, gets away with it, but Looney outfights AD for the board. And in the scramble, of course, Clay is right there for a shot with his foot in the line and two more points. Austin Reeves is trying to get on my favorite players list since he just seems to make the right plays at the perfect times. This play is designed for him to slip the ball screen and spot up on the right wing while LeBron runs pick and roll with AD. However, Poole swipes at the ball, forcing LeBron to pick it up, and Reeves attacks on the catch, draws Clay to the help, and Curry runs to the corner instead of sticking with Russ. Why does he do that? Because Reeves was staring at Avery Bradley the whole way, and this is a no-look bounce pass. Perfect! It's the Lakers who are now in control of their destiny, up four with the ball under four minutes. They run the same play, this time LeBron uses the pick and roll, Poole has to bump down to AD, so LeBron skips to the open man. As the shot clock winds down, Reeves can't wait for AD to slowly get post position, leaving Poole on the ground in a heap as this tiny Warriors lineup has no rim protection on the off-foot layup. Bravo! A quick point about this lineup. Steve Kerr had never played Otto Porter at the 5 before, and I gotta tell you, with this much shooting and spacing, I'm not sure how any team is going to be able to stop him. And the game of basketball always requires a little luck to beat a talented team, and this was it. Porter has a free pass to the rim on the roll, but Bradley smartly gets into the passing lane to close the window. However, the deflection goes right to Clay. LeBron can't get there in time, and the lead is cut in half. Watch how quick this release is. 23 frames of video, that's less than half a second. While this five of ultra shooters might not be excessively tall, they are long, and this set was ill-designed. The spacing is poor on the weak side with Reeves, Russ, and Bradley bunched up, and AD nearby. This allows Porter to shadow LeBron at the block and deflect his pass to the cutting AD into a key steal. We've come to expect Clay to hit every clutch shot he takes, so it was almost surprising to see him miss this, but Russ does not even try to box out. Porter grabs the rebound, and they foul him. This lets the Warriors run their patented out-of-bounds play, which has Curry backscreen the inbounder and come off his own screen. But Russ had switched onto him, gets on the high side, kinda holds him for good measure, so the primary action is blown up. But that means a pin down for Clay is flowing on the weak side. Avery Bradley turns his head to look at the ball. Remarkable that's all it takes, as Clay barely dips and gets this off in 16 frames of video to tie the game. I was very surprised to see the Lakers turn to Russ to run this pick and roll while LeBron watches from the right wing. But he completely collapses the defense and makes a beauty of a lob pass to retake the lead. There was nothing the defense could do. The Warriors love to catch the defense out of position with the quick pin down for Clay, but LeBron is all over it. However, Russ gets caught trying to go to Clay as well, leaving Wiggins a free run to the hoop. But there's Austin Reeves rotating all the way from the top of the key to stop it, so we end up with an ISO. Andrew versus LeBron, and I'm surprised more teams don't go at LeBron on defense to either get by him or draw fouls. Neither of those things happen here, but the audacity to pull a three in the King's face for the lead? Wow! The Lakers again go to Russ, marginalizing LeBron on that right wing. This is weird, folks, but it gets a switch and the offense has a major advantage with Poole on AD. Watch how expertly they scram switch him out of there, but Clay is also a mismatch. Russ makes a mistake by cutting through a crowded lane. It allows his man to freely come over to double right as the shot clock turns red. This should have been a shot clock violation or a terrible burp up shot and an empty possession, but there's my man Austin Reeves cutting as a release valve and then twisting and fading and falling while drawing two free throws. Now this was a very dubious call. The lead official is right there and calls nothing. The trail does have an angle to see, but he waits until the shot clearly misses before blowing his whistle. And the replay makes you wonder if this truly was enough contact to merit a call. I don't think so. Good things happen to people who can shoot the ball. And while this wasn't a great decision to jack this one up, remember, refs won't call the foul if the contact on the arm occurs after the ball is released. AD can't handle this cinder block brick coming off the board hot. Of course, Clay is in perfect position for the kick out, and he retakes the lead. Why the Lakers didn't try to take more advantage of the small ball lineup, I have no idea. LeBron should have posted up. 
Instead, they force the switch on the pick and roll, but Wiggins does a great job to force the catch all the way to the corner, giving time for the defense to rotate. The defense gets what they want, LeBron having a pump fake and sidestep to interrupt his rhythm, but no one went to pick up AD under the hoop, leaving poor little Steph Curry to valiantly try to box him out, but to no avail. And that leads to this insanity. AD chokes the second free throw. Russ pushes off to get Wiggins out of there, gets a hand on it. LeBron taps it. You got Russ tapping it again. AD grabs it. He can't hit. LeBron's tap doesn't go in. And finally, Wiggins snatches it, and they even call a foul here. Did Klay Thompson foul AD on his attempt? It looks like a clean swipe, but the foul on LeBron didn't seem necessary. Just call it out of bounds on him and give it to the Warriors. Curry had taken three shots the whole fourth quarter, and he was not shooting well at all. But he's paid the big bucks for a reason, so they force Austin Reeves onto him, who does an admirable job pressuring, but why isn't LeBron trying to block this shot? This was the first nail in the coffin, and Steph knows it. Here's the play I love from the Lakers. AD ball screens for Russ, but it's fake action. It's really a snapback for LeBron coming off an AD pinaway. I can't believe LeBron tries a no-look wraparound bounce pass here when a simple lob for a dunk would have sufficed. This should have been a steal, and they're lucky Wiggins ends up kicking it. Here's that same play, and remember, LeBron is the whole ball game in this design. Russ stares at him, but completely misses him wide open under the basket. While you can't argue with the quality of shot he generates after the drive, you can't help but wonder what would have happened had LeBron gotten the pass on his first cut. The defense does not have to follow with the five second difference between shot clock and game clock and one timeout left. The Warriors want to wind the clock down as low as possible before shooting, but Curry continues his horrid three-point shooting night and now the Lakers have one last chance. This is the perfect opportunity to take the foul, put the Lakers in the line, and eliminate the chance for them to tie it up. We saw the Warriors not do this recently and it cost them dearly. So they're going to do it right this time, right? Right? Coach Vogel might have thought this too, so he drew up a play where Malik Monk, a good free throw shooter, receives the ball. However, Gary Payton II doesn't foul them, and the Lakers clearly had no other play call, it appears. LeBron suddenly realizes he has to move, and now Curry decides to take the foul, but it was while LeBron was shooting. Now, we can go frame by frame and see that he was probably fouled before the upward act of the jump shot began, but you simply cannot be in this situation as a defense. The foul needed to be taken right away. Interestingly, LeBron is almost never in a situation to make free throws to win or tie a game. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. And he promptly chokes the first free throw, makes the second, and no team has missed the last free throw on purpose, gotten the rebound, gotten behind the three-point line, and actually made it, although LeBron certainly made this one interesting. All of this added up to an intense regular season game in February, one with lots of intrigue, drama, and an epic ending that could lead us to want another matchup of these two teams in the playoffs. However, the Lakers have lost three in a row and 12 of their last 16 games. While this was their best game they played in a long while, it looks like they're destined for the play-in tournament where anything can happen. Oh.